Hey friends, welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we've been studying from this lesson right here, three cosmic messages. And we've been studying this week from lesson number four, which has the title, Fear God and Give Glory to Him. Today, we're going to dive into Monday's lesson, which has the title, Fearing and Obeying God. Now, something that we talked about yesterday transitions over it, it crosses over into today's lesson, which is at the very foundation of what it means to fear God is the aspect of reverence, right? We revere God. We are in awe of Him. We honor Him as we fear Him. Again, fearing God doesn't have anything to do with being afraid of Him or of being scared of Him, but of respecting, revering, and being in awe of His power and His glory and His providence and just who He is. So, Today's lesson brings an additional understanding to that, which is fearing God equates to keeping his commandments. It equates to um, honoring what God has revealed to be his will for our lives. If there's one thing that's true in the Bible is that God's character is revealed in his commandments. It's revealed in his law. So I think that one of the best verses that today's lesson provides for understanding this a little bit better is found in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, that says this, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's all for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. You'll remember that the book of Ecclesiastes is really a diary of King Solomon right? There are ups and downs. There are moments where he's happy and angry and sad and joyful. And the reason it's not that he was, you know, just going through roller coasters of emotions is because this is a book that describes um, his life, right? It's his diary. So there are moments where he was finding no purpose in life. It was uh, futile and, and, and vain and frivolous. And in other moments, he was considering and observing life. And so at the very end of all his observations, of all his wanderings, He comes to the conclusion that as it says here, the conclusion of the whole matter is fear God and keep his commandments. But the question is why? Why does fearing God have to do with keeping his commandments? After all, aren't we under God's grace? What then is the purpose of the commandments? What is the purpose of God's law? There are some that would say that whenever we're talking about God's law, really what we are, we're we're talking about is legalism, right? It's people who think that they can be saved by keeping the law. But that's not what the Bible reveals. There's no contradiction between God's grace and God's law or God's grace and works, right? There's no contradiction between that. In fact, we see that both are part of the whole plan of sanctification, the whole process of sanctification. As we find in the book of Ephesians chapter two, verse eight through uh, 10, which is truly where we find a formula where God provides his ideal for understanding grace, faith, and works. Look at what it says. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, that says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So the logic here is that we are saved by God's grace. There's no contention over that. There's no confusion. Friends, there is nothing that we can do to be saved. There is nothing that we can do to be saved except turning into the Lord our sins, our sinful life, and accepting his free gift of grace, right? And the way that we do that is through faith, right? We're not saved by faith. We take hold of God's grace through faith. I hope you see the distinction there. So we are saved by grace through faith. That's where we get the, uh, the that, that's where we reach out and take hold of the faith. And the natural result of that process of accepting God's grace and taking hold of it is good works, which God prepares beforehand so we should walk in them. So you see that it's not really something that we do, right? The whole process, grace, faith, and works, it comes from the Lord. Be that accepting, be that reaching out in faith, and be that doing then the good works. So I hope you see that fearing God and keeping his commandments, it's not really a formula for salvation. It reveals salvation. It reveals where our heart is at. Because we fear the Lord, because we honor him, because we have a relationship with him, because we know him and know that he is a God that is worthy of our fear, right? Of our awe, of our admiration. 
well, then of course we're going to do the good works. Of course we're going to be faithful and keep his commandments because after all, friends, God's commandments reveal his character. It reveals his personality. It reveals who he is. When you go through and through, just as an example, the Ten Commandments, you'll see, for example, that each one of these commandments, they reveal aspects of who God is. For example, why does the Sixth Commandment say, thou shalt not murder? Why does the Bible say that? Because God is life. God is life. So we should not take life. Why does the Bible say, why is one of the Ten Commandments, right, thou shalt not lie? That's the ninth commandment. Why? Because God is truth. And if God is truth, and then I, I go and I do the antithesis of, of truth, right? I lie. I am going against who God is. His very nature is the, is the manifestation of these laws. From the first to the last commandment, God is a manifestation of these commandments. God is truth. God is loyalty. God is integrity. God is honesty, right? God is contentment. So I hope that you see that these commandments, they're not given as a means of salvation. They're given as a means of verifying, of measuring, of, um, of, of making sure that I'm on the right path, that I have accepted God's grace and that I have done that through an act of faith and that he is being able, he has space in my life. I am giving that to him to work these good works in me. Friends, belief becomes faith at the point of action. Belief becomes faith at the point of action. What that means is that any belief that doesn't transform, it's not true faith. So you can't confuse that with faith um, or the faith that takes hold of God's works. I'd like to finish with a story here. There's a little story that's told of a, a young boy and his father that are walking through, you know, the, the, the Washington memorials, you know, the different um, places there in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. And that young little boy, he sees the Lincoln um, Memorial, right? Sorry, Washington, the Washington Memorial, the, the big obelisk, right? And he sees that beautiful obelisk and he's like, well, I want that. I want to buy that, um, that obelisk, that memorial. And he says, Daddy, I want to buy this memorial with my 25 cent coin right here. He had a shiny coin, 25 cents, right? 25 cent coin. And his father looks at him, you know, you know, doubtfully, and he's, well, you know, I don't know what to tell him. I... So they see a police officer walking there on the grounds, and he says, Son, why don't you go ask the police officer? And so the little boy walks up to the police officer and he says, Officer, I'd like to buy the Washington Memorial, and here I have my coin, and I want to own it. And the officer, he, he turns to the boy and he says, Son, I got to tell you three things. First of all, it's not for sale. Secondly, with the amount of money that you have, you could never afford it. And thirdly, as a son of this nation, as a citizen of this nation, a child of this land, it's already yours. It's not for sale. You can't buy it. You couldn't afford it. And it's already yours. Friends, it's the same with God's salvation. It's the same with God's grace. It's not for sale. You can't buy it. You could never afford it. With the mere coins that we have to try to, you know, uh, buy our merit or, or with our merit buy salvation, we could never afford it. But thirdly, as a child of heaven, as a child of God, it's already ours. So I hope you understand that through today's lesson, there is a connection between fearing God, keeping his commandments, but that connection is not salvation. You can't merit, you can't earn your salvation that way. We fear God because we come to know him. We understand him to be an awesome God. And that leads us to keep his commandments and to honor him in our lives. So I hope that today's lesson truly um, provided that distinction, right? That, that understanding uh, between one thing and another, and that it's unfair to demand salvation from God's works, right? God's works were never meant to save anyone. So I hope that that distinction was made clear in today's lesson. I hope that you truly study your lesson. Don't forget to look up the lesson, look up the Bible verses, fill out the questions. That's going to go a long way into helping confirm the knowledge in your mind. Also, please remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our channel so that you can be, um, be informed of new content that we put out and that you could share it with other people that would also benefit from it. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow for another study of Sabbath School Daily.